The Earl of Northampton, released from the Prince's entourage, joined John Armstrong at the head of the archers and nodded towards the city walls. Brood of a place, John, the Earl said cheerfully. Formidable, my lord, Armstrong grunted. The island's named for you, the Earl said glibly. For me? Armstrong sounded suspicious. It's the Ile Saint-Jean, the Earl said, then pointed to the nearer of the two abbeys, a great monastery that was surrounded by its own ramparts, which were joined to the city's higher walls. The Abbe aux hommes, the Earl said. You know what happened when they buried the conqueror there? They left him in the abbey for too long, and when the time came to put him in the vault, he was rotted and swollen. His body burst, and they reckon the stench of it drove the congregation out of the abbey. God's vengeance, my lord, Armstrong said stoically. The earl gave him a quizzical look. Maybe, he said uncertainly. There's no love of William in the North Country, Armstrong said. Long time ago, John. Not so long that I won't spit on his grave, Armstrong declared, then explained himself. He might have been our king, my lord, but he were no Englishman. I suppose he wasn't, the earl allowed. Time for revenge, Armstrong said loudly enough for the nearest archers to hear. We'll take him, we'll take his city, and we'll take his goddamn women. The archers cheered, though Thomas did not see how the army could possibly take Caen. The walls were huge and well buttressed with towers, and the ramparts were thick with defenders who looked as confident as the attackers. Thomas was searching the banners for the one showing three yellow hawks on a blue field, but there were so many flags and the wind was stirring them so briskly that he could not pick Sir Guillaume de Vex's three hawks from the other gaudy ripples that swirled beneath the embrasures. So what are you, Thomas? The Earl had dropped back to ride beside him. His horse was a big destria, so that the Earl, despite being much shorter than Thomas, towered above him. He spoke in French. English or Norman? Thomas grimaced. English, my lord, right to my sore ass. It had been so long since he had ridden that his thighs were chafed raw. We are all English now, aren't we? The Earl sounded mildly surprised. Would you want to be anything else? Thomas asked and looked around at the archers. God knows, my lord, I wouldn't want to fight them. Nor me, the Earl grunted. And I've saved you a fight with Sir Simon. Or rather, I've saved your miserable life. I talked to him last night. I can't say he was very willing to spare you a throttling, and I can't blame him for that. The Earl slapped at a horsefly. But in the end, his greed overcame his hatred of you. You've cost me my share of the prize money for the Countess's two ships, young Thomas. One ship for his dead squire, and the other for the hole you put in his leg. Thank you, my lord, Thomas said effusively. He felt the relief surge through him. Thank you, he said again. So you're a free man, the Earl said. Sir Simon shook on it, a clerk made a note of it, and a priest witnessed it. Now, for God's sake, don't go and kill another of his fellows. I won't, sir, Thomas promised. And you're in my debt now, the Earl said. I acknowledge it, my lord. The Earl made a dismissive noise, suggesting it was unlikely Thomas could ever pay such a debt. <laughs>